Hey everybody, welcome back. There's a new version of Lhasa scaling out with some really big improvements to the frame gen portion of the program. When you come here to Steam, you're going to see major update LSFG 3.1, which is the same version number as before. When you click launch, it updated automatically for me, so hopefully it's going to update automatically for everyone. You'll see up here at the corner loss of scaling version 3.2, and that's what that's how you're going to know that the program has updated. What we're mainly concerned with is the frame generation portion, so the left side of the screen here, and we'll talk a little bit about rendering here on the other side. So it's still frame generation version 3.1. There's two different modes. There's fixed and adaptive mode. Fixed works with an FPS cap, so for me in particular. I have my FPS capped at 30. I have a 60 hertz monitor. I cap my frame rate at 30 in the user config file for Flysim 2024, and I use the fixed version of this program. You can also use adaptive, which is this one, targeting trying to achieve that adaptive frame rate. When you have it set for fixed, the multiplier, if you remember, the big headline number six months ago or so was that it could now generate 20 times the frame rates, and you can. If you click here, you just it'll go all the way up to 20, so that's a the 20 time frame generation. I don't bother with that, I stick with two, so in other words, doubling my frame rate. The next thing here of interest to us is flow scale. Now what flow scale does is it downscales the input frame and then does the performance improvements on a downscaled version of the image that you're generating and then re-upscales it for your screen. And what this does is helps with performance. And basically down here it says to target an output resolution or a scaled input resolution of 1080p. So if you're on a 1440p monitor like I am, you want to set it at 75% or 50% for a 4K monitor. I set it to 75%, like I said right here, and it seems to work quite well. Performance is an on-off switch. This is for lower, less powerful GPUs. Now there's two capture versions, DGX, DXGI and WGC. DXGI is for Windows 10. WGC is for Windows 11. I tried WGC, it didn't work as well for me. I liked DXGI even though I am running a Windows 11 system. Q target right here, there's three settings, zero, one, and two. Most, I, I would say probably 99% of people just set this to one and you're good to go. Now the scaling, we're not interested in. We are interested in rendering. So in rendering, what you wanna do is turn your VSync off in the sim and turn it on here. If you have it off, it will allow tearing. So you might get some screen tearing if you have VSync off. I have mine set to VSync one half, which is half your monitor refresh rate, obviously. Max frame latency. This is the, the maximum number of frames that can be stored before they're rendered. In previous versions of this program, I had that set to one. They now say that having it set to two or higher is gonna give you better performance. A value that's too low may limit the frame rate in lossless scaling. Draw FPS, all this does is it shows you an FPS counter in the upper left hand corner of the screen. The other thing you can do is set up profiles. You just click here and you give it a title and you can set up new profiles. I have one for the Formula One game and for Microsoft Flight Simulator. That's an old version. That's for my Flight Sim 2020 setup. So these are the settings that I'm running for loss of scaling in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. The last thing is how you turn it on and off. Now, it's called loss of scaling because it was originally designed as a scaling program. We don't use it for that, we use it for frame gen. To turn it on and off, you press this scale button. However, you have to be focused on your flight sim window. Your flight sim window has to be in focus in order for it to turn on and turn off. The easiest way to do it, come over here to settings, you can set a scale hotkey. The default is control S. So basically what you do, you turn lossless scaling on, launch your flight simulator, have your flight simulator window in focus, and then just hit control S, and there'll be a five second countdown. 
and loss of scaling will render. You will see a noticeable change in the image when it turns on. And then when you, if you wanna turn it off, you just hit Control S again. And now let's get into the sim and we'll do some comparisons here. Here we are in the sim. Let's take a look, first of all, at my settings. Got everything completely jacked just to try and get as much, you know, uh, load on the GPU as possible. Using DLSS, DLAA. Uh, I mean, not everything completely jacked. I mean, this is what my normal TLOD is. I've got a couple of these higher than I usually would have them. OLOD is what I normally have it. We continue down here. Anastropic filtering, I usually have it eight. Texture resolution, I usually have it medium. Terrain shadows, shadow maps are higher than they usually are. And the other thing that I have on that I normally have off is fauna. And in this case, I have it on an ultra. Now I do have my frame rate limited to 30, which is half my monitor refresh rate in the user CFG file. And notice that I have frame generation off. So if you look up here at the side of the screen, you see my performance. This is the dev mode FPS counter. You can see here at the bottom, my VRAM is about 8.2 out of 10.2. So if I, if I just look around here with frame gen off, you can see it's pretty jittery. So let's turn frame gen on. And this is NVIDIA DLSS. This is the frame gen mod. And it's going to take a second to settle here. So now it's, now it's pretty smooth. You can see my frame rates have doubled. Let's turn frame gen back off and then turn on lossless scaling frame gen. Turn that off, come back out here. You can see frame rates back down to 30. Now, if I hit control S, it's going to turn on lossless scaling and we'll give it a second to settle. And now pretty much just as smooth as it was with the LSS frame gen, the frame gen mod. But the difference is going to be, and the key question is artifacting. Oftentimes when you're flying, what you'll see is artifacting around the edges of the windows. That's the first thing we're going to look for. So now let's get flying and take a look and compare the three different methods. All right, here we are coming out on centerline. We're using the frame gen mod. And I want you to look at the edge of the screen, the edge of the windows here as we take off. And you're going to see what we're talking about for this artifact thing. That's mainly where I see it. So mixtures and props full forward, fuel pumps around, flaps are set. And we'll bring the power in. Power is set. And see that right here? This is what we're talking about, all this stuff. And if I move my view here, you'll see it up here as well. But this is what we're talking about in terms of the artifacting. One of the things that you will see quite a bit of is artifacting on the spinner of the engines for prop airplanes. Now watch this when we get into the airplane here. See this right here? Look at the amount of artifacting there. It's pretty bad, right? So now let's turn off the frame gen mod. Let's turn off NVIDIA frame gen in the sim. And then this is just regular. And now let's turn on lossless scaling. And look at this. None of it. As a matter of fact, you can see the terrain right here on the underside of the spinner. And if you think it's just because there's no frame gen on, so this is with loss of scaling frame gen enabled. Now let me disable it and look how jittery that is. So you can see there's no artifacting there, but it's very jittery. Now we restart loss of scaling frame gen. Come over here. It's very, very smooth. And look at that. No artifacting at all on the spinner. So now let's do the takeoff again. All right, here we are back on the ground in Anguilla and we've got loss of scaling frame generation going. So we saw what it did for the spinner. Now let's see what it does for the windows here. Mixtures and props full forward. Few pumps are on. Flaps are set. 
Let's bring in the power. Can't really see where I'm going because I'm not looking in that direction, but look at the difference. Look at this. None of it. None of that artifacting that we saw in the window. And the other departure. I mean, that's truly remarkable. There's the spinner with lossless scaling frame generation. Now let's turn loss of scaling frame generation off. And that's the spinner with NVIDIA frame generation. Take a quick look at FSR3. It's going to give us the same thing here. Might be a little bit better, might be a little bit worse. It's just different. I don't think it's better or worse. But there it is with FSR3. Now let's turn that off. Let's resume here. And that's with no frame generation, but again, see how jittery this is. Lossless frame, lossless scaling frame generation coming on. Super smooth, no artifacting at all. That is absolutely unbelievable. So that's quite a remarkable change with the latest update to lossless scaling. I have to be honest, I, I've always just opted for either the NVIDIA frame gen mod or now I use oftentimes uh, FSR3, the native version in Flysim 2024, simply because it's just easier. And I've gotten really good results with those. The artifacting doesn't bother me the way it does bother some people. However, even I'm going to really start considering using lossless scaling now because there are absolutely, there's absolutely no artifacting whatsoever. And even if it doesn't bother you, not having it there is a plus for sure. So really, really impressive stuff from lossless scaling. If you're not familiar with it, totally encourage you to get this program and give it a try. And the latest update is just absolutely fantastic. If you guys have any questions or comments or feedback, I'd really appreciate to hear from you in the comments section below. And in the meantime, I hope everybody's doing well and take care.